Let's take a look now at the Argentine list. They've lost their three games all by large margins. A big jump up for them uh, from the South American competition. Their best player is Maria Polaris. She's their leading scorer, but averaging only just under nine points a game and 10 rebounds a game. Left often to uh, do an awful lot of the work by herself. There are a few veterans on the team. There's Coach Cardarelli. Besides Motura, who's 54, Castaldi is 50, Cornell is 40, Linari is 39, the, the veterans of this team. But there's a lot of younger talent coming up and making a difference. Polaris is only 24. And for Germany, well, the players to watch for, their one-two punch is Marika Miller, number four, and Marina Monin, the captain, number 14. The two of them together average 39 points a game of the 63 points a game that the Germany averages. And Miller, an interesting story, coaches, plays in the U.S. for Milwaukee Bucks and coaches at Wisconsin Whitewater and is married to Desi Miller of the American team. So if the U.S. and Germany meet, it will be a household competition for the Millers. Argentina's results, well, a loss by 66 to Brazil, by 59 to Great Britain, and by 45 to Canada. They're improving, obviously, as, as they go on, getting used to the level of competition, but obviously realize, too, that the level of competition is a step up to, from what they're used to. Germany at 2-1 and one, defeated Brazil by 45, then lost to Great Britain in a great match, five-point game, and then came back to beat Canada by 14. And now we'll end this their run in the tournament with this game against Argentina. Great Britain has already finished theirs. They are, as you saw, three and one. So even if Germany win this match to finish three and one, they would finish behind Brit Britain uh, by virtue of the head-to-head -head game, which is the first tiebreaker. Maria Castaldi will take the jump for Argentina. Just happy to be here. And Schoenemann for Germany. And Schoenemann controls the tap for the Germans. It's brought up by first over to Velin. First. Schoenemann on the baseline and hits. Two nothing to Germany, 30 seconds gone in the game. That's Polaris coming down the middle of the court, trying to set up underneath. Perez moves across, nice pass, and Perez puts it in. Good look, getting cutters through, something they were unable to do in earlier games when I saw the first inbounds for Germany. Velin, inside to Gross. Gross with lots of time and puts it in. Now, one of the things we've noticed in this tournament, they've been very tight on calling the three second rule. You're only allowed three seconds in the green key area in the paint, as they say. And if, you, if you're if you in there and lining up your shot, pump faking, getting it ready, those count against your three seconds. So you have to be careful to release quickly. Another good pass, entry pass for Polaris, and she banks it in. It's four to four. Now you notice Germany has started uh, five that don't include, it doesn't include Miller or Monin, which is a good way of getting your team serious minutes while, while the game is competitive. Get those bench players in. Schoenemann with the shot. And in fairness, it's also the best thing for Argentina because they can get some more serious competitive minutes as well. Six to four, Germany. Olmedo. Cuts through to, to take the pass back. Polaris now coming behind her and calling for the ball. It's a long shot for Polaris. Hits the front of the rim and the rebound to Schoenemann. Sorry, to Gross. First. 
Almeida stops her at the foul line. First inside. Lenari with the rebound for Argentina. Linares spins around, sets things up. Polaris was cutting into the middle and has it. She puts it up there, shot won't fall. Rebound by Schoenemann for Germany. Back up top to Villeen, over to Gross. Omeda picks her up. Gross back to Schoenemann, she's got the screen, and hits. Schoenemann has been averaging almost nine points a game in the tournament so far. Polaris was coming across at the foul line and gets it now, but she's picked up by Potswald. Rebound taken by Gross up to Schoenemann. First, Potswald coming down the lane. Schoenemann's gonna take it herself and put it in. And it's 10 to four, Germany. Just over four minutes gone in the first quarter. Schoenemann has eight of the 10 points for Germany. Olmeda now. Now, Perez wasn't looking for the pass. Perez had the right idea, but was having trouble getting out. But cutting toward the basket, Olmedo saw it before she did. And Perez couldn't control. Gross with the pass from Schoenemann. Gross misses, but gets her own rebound. Misses again, taps the rebound out of bounds. It'll go over to Argentina with just over five minutes to play in the first quarter. <laughs> Polaris picks up the ball. In the German half, Olmedo brought to a stop by Bellin. Polaris, she's cut off by Gross. Now she's got the shot, hits the front of the rim and Gross gets the rebound for Germany. First. Welling, Welling setting the screen for her. to Germany. First, inside the foul line, she misses. Poyaris misses the rebound, and Gross picks it up. Back to first, across to Schoenemann. Schoenemann takes a bump from Olmedo, trying to fight her way in, now releases with five on the shot clock, and the rebound, Poyaris comes away with it. Lenaris, back to Poyaris. Almeida sets a good screen for her, but it's too far out. Piaris looking for the shot, now takes it, and it falls just short. Scrape the front of the rim. And Perez gets an assist getting up. Eight of the Argentine team play for Silsa in the Argentine League. 
the other four have played with three other teams, but they're very, so they're very familiar with each other and their style of play. By contrast, there's four Germans playing for BG Baskets in Hamburg, three for Meinhardt and Skywheelers, and two for RBB Munich. So that's nine playing on three teams. The concentration of players. That was a one-handed one shot just off the front rim. Almost a baseball throwing motion. But I kind of like that coaching look, as I say, better than the polo shirt or uniform look that most teams coaches wear now. Oh, that's a great pass. Entry pass to Gross, and Gross puts it in, cutting down the lane. Wellen was moving away from the basket, put it back with the little hook pass, dropped it in over Gross's shoulder. Gross lays it in, and it's 12-4, Germany. Polaris, shot won't go, but she gets the foul. Foul is going to be on Pot Potswold. That's the team's first. And before she shoots the foul shots, we have a timeout call by Argentina. And with 2.35 to play in the first quarter, it's 12 to 4. The early bird crowd is still filing in here at the Carioca Arena One, one of the two arenas in the Olympic Park being used for wheelchair basketball. Most of the games had featured small but enthusiastic rooting sections coming from all over the world to support their teams. Somewhat more Argentines than, than from other countries. Lots of Brazilians for when Brazilians, Brazil's men's, men's or women's teams play. But mostly it's been filled up with locals coming out just to see the basketball. And it's been a real family event. The atmosphere has been great and you know, belying the uh, crowd here for the early session. There have been some great crowds, near sellouts or sellouts for almost every session in this basketball. Schoenemann for Germany. Gross at the foul line, and the basket's good, and there will be a foul. The foul is on Olmedo. Schoenemann with the rebound of the missed foul shot. Schoenemann puts it right back up. She gets the basket and she draws the foul, which is on Paul Yaris. And there you see, there's the foul right there. It's a bad defensive position when you have to lean back into the shooter. And Schoenemann completes a three-point play, and the score goes up to 17 to 6 for Germany. Lomato now. Top of the key. Lenari. Castaldi, she's got it. She has the shot. Oh, and it goes. Those are not forgiving rims. It was that way during the Olympic basketball. It's been that way during the Paralympic basketball here at Carioca Arena One. They are very tight rims. 
and they don't often give you much. Oh, nice, nice pass, nice pass. Well in, uh, gets it in. Two good passes by Germany, penetrating one pass at a time and getting the easy layup for Weller. And that was not, that second pass was not an easy one to get away with three defenders collapsing in on Potswald. Potswald goes out now, and Breisman comes in for Germany. Tomato gets a nice screen from Perez. Out to Pollaris. Perez went across in the bottom, but first had her covered. Pollaris' shot was off. Wellen. And the pass was just a little bit high for her to handle. Good idea, though. She, was ha she had the break. Gross saw her. And you see it took a high bounce. She couldn't corral it. Yaris. Double screen. Time to line it up and misses. Rebound by Scherneman. Under a minute to play now in the first quarter. Scherneman. Oh. Gross wasn't going. Gross was busy, was busy picking. Scherneman saw that she had a path to the basket. Gross didn't see it. And Schoenemann led her with a pass that Gross had her back to. Turnover to Argentina with 50 seconds to play in the quarter. Players letting the ball roll. The clock doesn't start until she touches it. Again, she's got the double screen. Shot clock down to 10, and now Bryceman comes in to defend her. The shot was short. It's funny because she had a better look, I think, right at the start and didn't take it. And that's, well, Olmedo's called for the foul. Let's see, right there, making the contact with Scherneman's wheel. There is a lot of contact in wheelchair basketball. It's a very physical sport. The picking and screening, defending is, is referred to as blocking. Oh, and that's a great pass from Schoenemann to Gross, and Gross just flips it in. 21 to six. Great vision to see down low and getting the ball high so that only Gross could, co could collect it. And last shot of the half. Polaris bangs it off the backboard, but not near the basket. And that ends the first quarter with the score. Germany 21, Argentina 6. So a good quarter for what amounts to the second unit for Germany. And for Argentina, maybe missing some chances they could have had because they look at the shooting percentage, only 15%, two for 13 from the floor. Only two turnovers, they played pretty well that way, but they're being out-rebounded 13 to four, and they're being outshot by nearly 50%. And, and you just can't win a game with shooting percentage that low. At the end of a quarter, it's 21-6 Germany. Twenty-one six Germany at the end of the first quarter, just getting ready for the start of the second quarter. The possession arrow is with Argentina. You can see that in the center of the scorer's table at 
center court, pointing in the direction of the basket the Argentines are attacking. So they will inbound the ball to start the quarter, and the arrow will switch in the German direction. Let's catch up with some changes. Same lineup out for Germany. Linari for Argentina. Good rebound by Olmedo, but the shot didn't have any spin coming off the backboard. And now first for Germany. Behind Bryceman, good entry pass to Schoenemann, and she puts it in. And well, so far, this has been her half. She's got 13 points, and Germany now have 23. Foul was on Castaldi. In and out, and Polaris with the rebound. Olmedo. Setting things up at the top. Lenari coming over to set a block. Tomato with the two-hand shot. That won't go. And Schunemann with the rebound for Germany. Up to first. Two Wellen went through first, Schunemann went through second, and she draws the foul, misses the shot. But you see how first got down there first. Then Wellen went through, Schunemann behind her in the open space, getting the shot and the foul on Perez. Cop de Villa comes in for Argentina. Schoenemann misses in the second foul shot. And Brewer comes in for Germany as first goes out. Schoenemann misses again. That's three in a row. She's missed, but she gets her own rebound. Good pass to Velen, and Velen lays it in. Nice look. You can see that. I love that camera angle because you can see exactly how that one developed. Oh, people do love seeing themselves on the big board. 25 to 6 to Germany now. Olmedo. Perez. Lenari at the foul line. Front of the rim and Gross with the rebound. Brewer. Oh, she's got the path to the basket. That was nice. And it won't go for her. Defenders, defenders went with the pick. And Brewer just went right past them the other way. Cop to do. Perez. Pass went over Linari's arms. And it's going to go out of bounds to Germany. Seven, just under eight minutes to play in the half. Olmedo, very aggressive defense at the half court line, but Germany get through Schoenemann to Gross inside. And Gross gets the basket and the foul on Lenari, trying to get the block from behind her. And we have a timeout called on the court by Coach Cardarelli. And Argentina with the score, Germany 27, Argentina 6. The mops come up to dry off the area in the paint.
you know, and, and I really admire what Coach Gunicki is doing here with Germany by by putting his uh, putting his high scorers on the bench, putting a second unit in effect out there, and seeing how they can play, giving them that experience, you know, getting some you know, better tape to evaluate as to how, how they play, see how they play together. It, you know, it does a lot of positive things besides resting his stars because everyone's been playing pretty much a game every day. There has been rest day along the way in the women's tournament, but it's a busy schedule and they get down to nuts and bolts right after this round robin schedule is over. The women's quarterfinals will be tomorrow. The round robin ends today, the quarterfinals start tomorrow. So resting your top players a bit is not a bad idea. It's win-win. And one of the side effects, obviously, is that it gives, a, gives the Argentines a little bit better chance, which, in fairness, they haven't taken advantage of. They've played well, well enough, but just haven't shot well enough. Argentina bringing the ball up. Olmedo. Looks at a shot. There's six on the shot clock now. Lenari's going to have to, it's a hard hook shot that misses the rim. And they see they're, they're not getting good shots. They started out, they worked for a couple early on. The German defense tightened up. They're not able to create shots, either with, either with the screens or cutters. When they get the good shots, they're not making them. Well in now with the rebound, the Schoenemann misses, and it goes out to Gross beyond the three-point line. Well in gets it back. She's got a screener there who's Brewer. Shot won't go, and it goes to Argentina. One offensive rebound for the Argentines, and that's largely it. You'll watch; they don't, don't. You won't see many white jerseys around the hoop. Look at how Germany's cutting them off right there from going through the paint. Almeida looking for someone to pass to. She's got a screener for her, so she can take the shot, but it's short. Welling brings it up. Gross. Nice drop pass for Brewer. Brewer's shot was partially deflected, and it's going to be a three-second violation. And again, once the first shot goes off, the three-second count should stop. So the three seconds has to be before that first shot went up, but the whistle, whistle came after the rebound. But when the shot doesn't hit the rim, the count continues. That mystery solved. A puzzle put, but answered. Minari, she's got a shot there. Just hit it over the rim. And right now, the Argentines, even when they're getting good shots, and that's the real problem, when they do get good shots, which have been basically from the outside, but still clean looks at the basket, they're not making them. Velin, she misses. Capitaville with the rebound. Trying to get it up quickly. Linari. Perez, she spins around. Woof, and you saw that one developing. Perez saw Linari coming in. Linari wasn't aware she was going to be getting the pass and it took her by surprise. And another turnover against Argentina as we approach the halfway mark of the first half. I should say the halfway mark in the second quarter. Three quarter mark of the first half. Brewer now. Rebound to Lenardi. Lenardi comes away. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
trying to keep the bigs away from the basket for the Argentines, which is a good idea. The cross-court pass to Capdeville. Capdeville in position for the shot, but has to change it to get more on it. And that becomes, then it becomes not a good shot. Where she is is, is is a nice shot there, but because of the defense, she has to change it. She has to make it into a sort of one-arm shot put to get more power on it. And, it. and then it becomes not a good shot. The rebound is tapped away by Germany, kept in the forecourt by Dellen. Gets a nice hand from the crowd for that effort. Brewer setting the screen for her <laughs> in the middle. Schoenemann lost it, and it bounced off Capdeville right back into Schoenemann's hands. And there's a foul on Cap de Ville. Cap de Villa. Cap de Villa. With just over four minutes to play. And Bellin is coming out. Polaris is coming in for Argentina. And Kuss comes in for Germany. Brewer, Schoenemann. Her shot is off. We've only had six points scored in this quarter, all by Germany. Polaris. She's got the screener as Almedo. She comes in a little bit tighter behind Perez. And again, she goes to the one-handed, the sort of shot put style shot, which, which takes the accuracy away. Gives her more velocity, but takes away the accuracy. Oh, and that's a foul on Breuer. Breuer had the open shot. And it's Perez, I think, who went crashing into her. Watches Breuer just gets that she, in fairness, she's going for the ball, but the chair got a good piece of Breuer. Brewer, I should say, and Brewer will go to the line. And they've given that as an unsportsmanlike foul on Perez, so after Brewer shoots her two shots, Germany will keep possession. Makes the second. The score should be 28, not 29 to 6. She only made one of the two foul shots. See if the scorer's table get on to that. Gross. Three minutes to play, five on the shot clock, across to Schoenemann. Her shot won't fall, and Polaris with the rebound. Capdeville. Across to Brewer. Six on the shot clock. Her shot misses Olmedo with the rebound for Argentina. Can she come up quickly? They could leave a German behind. And 
Almeida's shot misses, but the rebound goes off Schoenemann and out of bounds. Scoreboard still has not been corrected with two minutes to play in the half, but the score should be 28 to six. For some reason, they seem to think that Brewer made the first foul shot, which he missed. And now they've adjusted it. Someone listens to me somewhere. Polaris. Her pass trying to go back out, but it's kept in by Almeida. Nice job by her. Six on the shot clock. Polaris, great pass to Captiville. Captiville can't get the layup to go. And that's the problem for Argentina. A good sequence. Olmedo, great effort to keep the ball in the half court. The two good passes, and then they can't finish. But Schoenemann time for Germany, and it's 30 to 6. Olmedo looking to go cross court. They've got the screen for Polaris. Can she get the pass over there? Well, she takes the shot instead. Polaris couldn't get inside on Brewer to get the rebound, and Brewer pulled it down, and she brings the, pa brings the ball up, passes it up to Schunemann. She gets the screen, takes the bump, puts it across to Gross, six on the shot clock for Germany. Gross drops it. And Brewer with the basket. Twelve on the shot clock. It's two seconds ahead of the game clock. Ar Argentina looking to work for what could be, in effect, the last shot of the half. Polaris. It's going to be Olmeda. She's got a nice look at the basket and makes it. And that's the first two points of the quarter for Argentina. They were outscored 11 to 2 in that quarter. And at the halftime, Germany lead 32 to 8. Well, some consolation there is Olmeda finally, with having the good screen, finally got the good shot off with both hands, controlling it, putting it right through and it's 32 to 8. If you look at the statistics, well, the German shooting went down in that quarter. They only had 11 points in the quarter, so not a good one. The rebounding, 27 to 16. The Argentine shooting at 11%. That's just not going to be good enough in this game. They've kept the turnovers to, to a minimum, but without being able to rebound because they're not getting people in good position, they're also not getting good shots, and they're missing the good shots they get, and that is why at halftime, Argentina trailed Germany 32 to 6. To eight.
Welcome back to Carioca Arena One in the Rio de Janeiro Olympic Park. Rio 2016 Paralympic Games Women's Wheelchair Basketball Group A and Germany lead Argentina at halftime 32 to 8. And looking at the teams coming out now, it looks pretty much like the two teams that finished the first half with the exception of Salcedo, number five for Argentina, who is in. Germany going with that same unit that started the game and has gone most of the way with only a, a couple of substitutions. And basically a more or less second unit. <laughs> Led by Giske Schoenemann. Schoenemann with 15 points is the high score for either team in the game so far and that's half almost half the points that Germany has scored. Velin and oh there's one new face Zion is in for Germany and Lindholm who misses that shot and it's rebounded by Linardi over to Perez. Lenardi just inside the foul line. And the rebound comes to Gross for Germany. Well in. Zayn. First. And first shot is a foul by Lenardis. You see first there having to go with the extra push as Lenar Lenardi was there to defend the shot. So it's Wellen, Zayn first, Lindholm, and Gross for Germany. So a couple of changes from that lineup that ended the first period. Cabrera and Salcedo, Polaris, Lenardi, and Perez for Argentina. First, Zayn, and she hits 34 to 8. And that's been really the difference, regardless of who's come in from Germany. They've always had shooters out there, a couple of people who can shoot. They had a, a cold second half, but still managed 11 points in that to Argentina's two. And that two came right at the end of the second quarter. Olmedo's shot just before the buzzer. Their first points of the quarter. That was a good look for Polaris inside, but Gross read it and was there first to take the pass on the steal and get it up to Velin. Velin with the entry pass to first. <laughs> that need, that look needs no translation for a from a basketball coach. Perez, that's her third foul. Just late getting in the way. Never got a chance to set up possession. Position, I should say. Not a shooting foul. Off the rim by a Brewer. And Polaris with the rebound. They set a double screen for her, and she hits. Polaris. This is what she was doing in earlier games. They get her the screen, give her the good look, and she can shoot. Zion now. So can she. 36-10.
Perez brings it down. Minardi. In and out. Germany come down now. Gross is in the paint and hits. Just short of the foul line, 38 to 10. Well, she had the path to the basket. All the defenders looking the other way. You saw Brewer was committed, was committed to the paint. Perez just went right behind her and put it in 38 to 12. Gross has the screen for first, and first puts it in. 40 to 20, 40 to 12, and all of a sudden both teams have found their shooting eyes. And Argentina want a timeout. Well, <laughs> they've just made a couple of baskets. I'd let them go with the momentum right there, actually. But we got a co coach. Cardarelli wants to talk to the team. And assistant coach Valeria. Their area. Getting the players some water. See the assistant coach Chris Giles and Josef Jaglowski just behind. Coach Klinicki, Giles, the British coach with the German team. So speaking of conflicts of interest, if the Millers go against each other, we could also have a British coach going against the Great Britain team if Britain and Germany meet in the playoffs, which they could well do. <laughs> I said it's a family atmosphere. Once the crowds start, start coming in, the crowds of locals, and there are a lot of kids. The baby strollers are just lined up in a special room set up uh, just to the entrance to the mezzanine of this arena. Um, right now, the lower deck is pretty much full. And the upper deck probably will be by the time of the second, second game of the session. Coach doing double duty as a <laughs> and we can start things off. Just under six minutes to play in the third quarter and Germany leads Argentina 40 to 12. Perez for Argentina. She's got an, well, she's got a screen there from Salcedo. From the foul line, and again the hit, shot hits. And Argentina like this; they obviously like this end better than the other one. It's 40 to 14. Getting better looks at the basket. Lindholm. Velen with the rebound. She misses the putback, and Polaris gets the rebound for Argentina. Perez. She takes the good the bump from Velen. Lenari. Perez sets the screen. Polaris on the other side now. They're setting up a double screen for her, and she takes the shot off the glass and puts it in. It's 40 to 16. First, 
Zion. Brewer. Well, Polaris came out and disrupted that shot, but she gets a better one mm, off the back of the rim and the rebound to Lenari. She can take that shot if she wants it, and she does. Use, tries to use the glass, but it's off and gross with the rebound, and gross quickly down to Velen. She's got the position. She can't get the shot to go, but there's a foul, and Velen will shoot too. <laughs> I think she's thinking she could have done that one a little bit better. One. She doesn't get a great path to the hoop. Straightened it out and Salcedo came in, but Salcedo clearly committing the foul. And that one's called an unsportsmanlike foul as well. The equivalent of a professional foul trying to stop the uncontested layup. And there's the German rooting section. And Velen makes the second, 41-16. Under four minutes to play in the third quarter. And Germany keep possession because of the unsportsmanlike call. Zion. And she swishes it, 43-16. You see Moonen and Miller there with the full warm-up suits on in the back. There's, they're not going to play. They're not going to see any action today. The two leading scorers for the German women and up to this point had been scoring 39 of their 63 points a game. Well, Perez wasn't going to take that shot. Salcedo gave her the, the screen. And Lenardi, can she put it over Gross? She does. And hits. 43-18. Brewer misses Lenardi with the rebound for Argentina. Germans get back quickly. Perez now come, brings it up for the Argentines. Wheels inside the paint to Polaris. And will be a three second violation, which Polaris was aware of. I think even before the whistle blew, she was trying to get out. Velen. Inside to Gross, off the glass, 45-18. Six to four is a low turnover game. And that's been part of the good, the good story for Argentina. Perez now with a double screen, but doesn't, doesn't take it. Perez, the low pointer at one, but very, very useful player. Very valuable to have a low pointer who's that, that talented. And first with the swish. Potswold, Potswold said to coach, did she really make that? Perez now, again, thinking about the shot. No one's moving. <laughs> That's that, that she's, the shot's the best alternative. She puts it off the glass and in. 
Well, I, I'm not sure why that's the last resort. That shot's been good to her. Nice reflection there in the glass. 47-20. Lindholm, good arc from the baseline, 49-20, and we're under a minute to play in the third, and Perez brings it up. At the foul line, again, tries to use the glass, but it's a little bit too hard. Uh, Zion couldn't bring it in. It's a good idea. Perez screening for Polaris. Shots off. And Perez just not high enough in the seat to get, a, get that rebound away from Gross. And that's going to bring the third quarter to an end. Much better stuff from both teams there. Germany scoring 17 points in the quarter. Argentina scoring 12, which is quite a turnaround from the only two points that they got in the second quarter. And that makes the score at the end of three, Germany 49, Argentina 20. And look at the change. The shooting percentage for Argentina has more than doubled since halftime, up to 23%. Still not great, uh, but it's much, much better. Germany's still over 50%. And turnovers, as I said, not many turnovers in this game, but the rebounding, a huge advantage to Germany as well. And they lead 49-20. And Polaris missed the shot at the foul line, but Omedo got hit hard. And you know, she's, she's signaling she needs. Let's take a look and see on the rebound there. It may simply be a muscle pull as she was stretching and leaning back, and that's what they're doing now is they're going to freeze, freeze that. Might have taken a bump there in the back. And then, yeah, you see the assistant coach, Valeria Ferreira, getting some ice to put on it. She was way up in, in the stretch, leaning backwards, left that back exposed. And... Uh, Schunemann is back in for Germany. She gets the ball right into Gross, but Gross misses the shot, and Polaris with the rebound for Argentina. Castaldi is in. Salcedo came in for Almeida. That's Salcedo setting the pick there. 
double screen for Polaris. Four on the shot clock. She has to do something. Then she finally turns around and shoots it. No one was moving away. She had the double screen. Neither of the other two chairs were in motion. And there's a foul before the shot. It's first hit the pass. I think the foul's on Adriana Motura. As I said, the introduction of the players at 54. She's the oldest woman in this basketball tournament. Schoenemann. Potswald gives her the screen, and Polaris gets another rebound. Perez. Castaldi. She's got Polaris behind her. He tries to use the glass. Can't get it there. And the rebound comes to Schoenemann. For first, oh, good pass. And the shot goes off the side of the backboard, but there's a foul. And Potswald will go to the line. The foul was on Motura, that's her second. And Argentina need a timeout with 7.48 to play in the game and Germany leading 49 to 20. No score so far in the fourth quarter here. Let's listen in. And a Potswald to shoot two. Makes the second, it's 50 to 20. Germany in the lead. Tura of Argentina who plays for Silsa, one of the eight players from Silsa on this team. Just loves playing basketball. Simple explanation she gave of why she's still playing at 54. Loves playing basketball. And what more can you say? First, Gross. Those rims. Saying it all through the Olympic basketball tournament as well. The Paralympic basketball tournament has been the same thing. They are very, very unforgiving. If you want your shot, you better hit, be hitting net. Schoenemann comes to a stop in the paint. Backs out. His first takes the ball behind Gross's screen. Schoenemann seven on the shot clock. Takes a look at it now. Realizes she has to shoot. Takes the long shot and misses. But there's a foul. Foul 
fouls on Olmedo. That's her third. First comes out. Welling comes in. She hasn't had a good day from the follow line. Schoenemann. She's 7 for, for 14 from the floor, 50%. But only 1 out of 5 make it 2 out of 6 from the follow line. They're shooting better from the floor than she is from the free throw mark. 51 to 20. As Olmedo is back in the game, as you can see. Taking care of her back. Polaris. Off the front rim and Gross with the rebound for Germany. Six minutes to play in the game. Bellin. And another foul. And this one's going to be on Motura. That's her third. And makes them both. So she's found her free throw shooting range now. She's got 18 points in Germany lead 53 to 20. Motura. Six on the shot clock for Polaris. Motura. Shot is off the front of the rim and Germany rebounds. Well then, to Schoenemann. <laughs> you hear Gross calling for the ball in the paint there, trapped underneath. Schoenemann with the shot in and out and the rebound Olmedo. They converge on her, she gets the pass out and then it's up to Perez and Perez is hit by Gross, and that'll be a foul on Gross in the backcourt. <laughs> Says that Kyra, the assistant coach, helps her up. Somebody loves whatever club's jersey he's wearing there. He sure loves it. 53-20, Germany over Argentina. Under five minutes to play in the game. Capdeville looking for a shot. Now, well, now she's got it. It doesn't fall. And she hits from the outside, 55 to 20. Just over four minutes to go. Good passing. Polaris had a nice look. Shot went off the front of the rim, but the rebound comes to Cap Deville and Argentina get a new 14 on the shot clock. They've got 10 left now. Loose ball picked up by Kuss. And up to 
Gross, who will bring it down for Germany with three and a half to play in the game. Gross holds up. All alone underneath is Schoenemann. She just reverses the chair and lays it in neatly. She's got 20. Well, I make it 20. You wait and see who's right. Captaville over the back of the backboard. Tried to put too much on it to get it over, over the outstretched arms of Gross. And there's another timeout on the court for Argentina. <laughs> I think the smiles by Cabrera there are, are at the shot, not at the general situation. But Argentina losing to Germany 57-20 with 2.48 to play in the game. I have a couple of questions here. What, what I what I like seeing from Germany here is is working on ways to improve the game of the players who you are going to be using in the next stages of the tournament. So that's what you're trying to do here. From Ar Argentina's point of view, at this point, you really want to get experience for the last players down on your bench, get everybody in, and get them that game experience. And. There's a couple of people on the bench, especially the youngsters like Gonzalez, who you saw uh, at the time out there. She's only 21 years old. She's only played in one game so far of the tournament. But given that they've been, they've lost by wide margins, you know, you'd, you'd love to see her just get some experience right, for herself. The, mi the minutes on the floor during the Paralympic Games would mean so much. But more importantly, it's, it's the actual experience of game play which is what makes you better, a better player. Captaville with the rebound for Argentina. 57 to 20 and two and a half to play in the game. You know, Perez has played 30 minutes a game. I really like her as a player, but there's nothing now at this stage. She's going to gain from the extra couple of minutes in the fourth quarter of a loss, whereas the 21-year-old could gain a lot. Ditto Chirino, so we haven't really seen. She's only 25. Perez is only 26 herself, but she's a more experienced veteran player. And there's Chirino, getting her some minutes there. There's nothing like reps, repetitions. S the steal by Briesman. Gross has, is slowed down by Perez. And the pass is stolen by Polaris. Can Argentina come out on the break? Polaris tries to start it off, but Chirinos couldn't get to it. And it comes back to Germany. They've got 18 on the shot clock now. Brewer. Kuss. Inside to Gross. Polaris was slapping away at it. Now Polaris tries to come down. Can they get her the long pass? Nope. Captaville just didn't see it by the time she turned around. But Polaris was trying to get down on the break. And there's Gonzalez. So she is in as well. Good to see Chirinos and Gonzalez. Polaris, the long shot doesn't go, but Argentina with the re rebound. And Polaris again. Looks at the clock, looks at the shot clock, looks at the situation. Three on the shot clock. Let's the three pointer go. It's short and again bounces out to Argentina. So they can take the last shot of. Well, there's only a reset to 14, so they can't uh, necessarily. But Polaris looking again at the shot clock. You can see her. She wants the three. 
Doesn't get it. Beats the buzzer, but doesn't get three. And now with eight seconds left, Germany just bring it down. And they will let the clock expire and come away with a win by 59 to 20. They shut out Argentina in that fourth quarter to seal the victory. And with the victory, they should seal second place in their group. At the end of the game, the final score, Germany 59, Argentina 20.